Hey guys, so you've all seen this picture. This is the instructions. This is how you're supposed to make a nine to one on on. Requires that you have three separate pieces of wire, wind them all at once, keep track of them, tone them out later, and then solder them back together. That seems a little silly to me when what you end up with is essentially just one continuous circuit. So I'm gonna show you how I do this with a single piece of wire in what I think is the easier way to go. All right, guys, first step in making this all easy is making sure that you've got the correct amount of wire so you can make it around the toroid as many times as you gotta make it, but you're not dealing with a whole bunch of extra that's just in the way and turns into waste. This particular FT240 is conveniently almost exactly a half inch in both one of these dimensions. So to go the whole way around the thing is four half inches or two inches. There is another half inch at least getting from one winding to the next. So that's two and a half inches. And then odds are you're not gonna be completely totally snug right up on top of the thing. So we're gonna call it three inches for each of the ultimately 27 turns we're gonna do around this thing. That's 81 inches. But you also need some to stick out on this end and stick out on this end to be your antenna and your ground. And we're gonna have a little, uh, little pigtail here for a tap. So add 10% and round up. I'm gonna cut 90, nine zero inches off of this spool before we get going here. Okay, you can't see the ends, you're gonna have to trust me, but I've got 90 inches cut off of there. And this is the one third point. This is 30 inches from, as it turns out, this short end right here. And um, that is important because that is gonna be essentially where our first go around the toroid is gonna to end. And that's where we need to tap the thing to feed the RF in from the coax. So we might as well make that little tap point right now, and then we don't have to worry about it later. Keep this thing easy to get at. I'm just gonna give it a couple of twists. Now you can certainly do this with your fingers. It does not require pliers, but I'm kind of a neat freak, and so I'm gonna do it with the pliers. The last thing we want to do is we want to take the long, the long end. This, this is the short end. Forget the short end. We want to take the long end and put a 90 degree bend in it, just like that. And the reason we're gonna we're gonna do that, so let me let me show you how this looks. I've got my twisted section, I've got my long wire coming off 90 degree bend to the right, and my short wire coming straight out the back. This is where we're gonna stick the toroid in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get myself a wire tie just started on here. And I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna stick this bugger right through the wire tie. And it works better if you get one that's big enough for the job. But anyway, so that my short wire is coming out here straight on the top. And my long section, my 90 degree bend, is going down the face of the toroid. And once you got that in there, you can actually give that uh, give that thing a snug little tug, make it nice and tight. It'll help you hold the wire in place. All right, so it's time to start winding. Uh, we're making a nine to one on on. It doesn't make any difference at all which direction you wind these two things, but I'm gonna suggest that you most likely wanna start with the short piece. So it seems to be headed off here to uh, what is counterclockwise winding by, by my count. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wind it around that direction. Now, well, I have found that you get much tighter wraps is I came around the first time here. The first one's easy, right? Because it's just on the outside of the toroid. I gotta go through the middle now. It seems to work better if you push the wire through as a loop and pull the end through like this, rather than if you stick the end down in there and try to pull it through, you get twists almost every time. So I've got one, two pieces of wire passing through the center of the toroid. That is two wraps. Keep them pretty spread out. If you want, you can use a marker to uh, say where they're gonna go, but uh, we're just gonna wing it. I'm gonna go around and finish up the first nine. Okay, 
With that first set of windings done, I'm actually going to cut this zip tie off of here because it's, uh, it's kind of in the way. And here's the other end that we already bent so that it would run down the front of the toroid. We're just going to grab that wire and we're going to pick up winding right alongside of where this end came out. These, uh, these wraps are going to be good neighbors. So go ahead and pull, pull that whole long wire through there, right? And then what you see is it comes, it comes up right alongside this other one. And it, it's going to look messy because this thing is still loose. Eventually, we're going to tie them all down. If you want, you could put another wire on, tie on here just to, uh, just to tame that. Or actually, what I sometimes do is just, just twist it around my, uh, my feed point there. That kind of makes it behave. But you're going to follow this same pattern the whole rest of the way around here. You're just going to wind right next to the wire that's there. And the only important part is that you stay on the same side of it. Don't, don't cross the streams. And you know what? Even if you do, it's still going to work. It's just not going to look quite as nice. And it'll be one billionth of one percent less efficient. So let me just go ahead and pull all of this wire through here. Get another set of, of turns completed. So I got one more turn here. And what's going to happen is I'm going to come out right next to my feed point. And you know what? That's two sets of turns done. All I'm going to do is keep going. I'm going to lay in a third set of turns exactly the same way. I'm going to go right next to the ones that I just put down and go the whole way around the toroid one more set of times. Okay, and again here, I'm coming around for the final time. Boom. There is the completed unun. Let me unwind the ground wire from from there and uh, I'm going to chop these off just so they're manageable plus it's fun to shoot them across the room. So the one coming out of the bottom is the ground connection. The twisted up one is the feed point and then this loose end over here is what eventually is going to go off to your random wire antenna. You know, before you go tying this thing down with 4,500 zip ties, you can uh, you can push the turns around a little bit. You can get them get them sort of where they ought to be. Again, this is this is really so not critical. Um, you will find that your SWR changes by a tenth or so or whatever else, depending on how evenly spaced these are and uh, how tightly wound they are. But you're talking about a non-resonant antenna that you're going to have to tune anyway. So if you want to lose sleep over it, knock yourself out. I never do. Well, and once you have futzed with it to your heart's content, you're relatively confident that you've got the windings where you want them. You don't want to move them around anymore. You just cross wrap the feed point with a pair of zip ties and she ain't going nowhere. All in all, it doesn't look too bad when it's done. Okay, let's be honest guys, this is not going to revolutionize your ham radio career. In fact, this is not even a better 9 to 1 unun -un than the traditional way of doing it. I just happen to think it's easier. It doesn't require different colored wires or for you to tone out what did you run where. Eliminates what is a likely source of error for some folks, especially if it's their first try. So here it is. If it works for you, fantastic. If you want to do it the old-fashioned way, that's fantastic. Whatever gets you on the air.